<laughs> Welcome to Opening the Bedroom Doors, everyone. I am here with my friend Erica, and we are going to be chatting about the pleasures of cock and playing with cock. And um, first, we're going to start out by doing some dancing and wiggling to just get in our body, shift from whatever we've been doing to get into this moment right now. We put on a little snake charmer song, and this is just a moment for you to wiggle, get comfortable, get seated, be entertained if you want to be entertained, um, or to dance yourself. And then we'll go into more of the pleasures of pleasing uh, cock and playing with cock. Every time I say that, I just want to become, <laughs> become a rooster in some way. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. This is all about snake charming because it kind of makes sense, you know? charmed my serpent Shit. off of my face. So, <laughs> too much. That was, that was effective. Uh, welcome, everyone. I hope that you wiggled a tiny bit. And if you didn't, no biggie. Um, again, my name is Jesse Fresh, and I am the host of Opening the Bedroom Doors. I'm a sex and intimacy coach. And all too often, I hear people talk about the things that they don't know that they can do behind closed doors. And they also imagine and tell stories of what's happening and compare themselves to this imaginary idea of what their neighbors are doing, what their friends are doing. And so this is a concept, this is a time for us to just sink into the things that other people are doing behind closed doors. I always invite a sex expert, a friend of mine, um, and we talk about something that they nerd out on that we can nerd out on and become better at. So today I have Erica Leroy with me, or Leroy, excuse me, and um, we are going to be chatting about the pleasures of playing with cock. Mm -hmm. This was actually requested in the group, specifically how to play with soft cock and erect cock and all of the different types of penis forms. And so we're going to get into that. Um, Erica and I first met, we have so many times that we have bumped into each other during certain events in the city um, pre-COVID. And I think that you reached out, was that the first time that we met when we went out and had tea together? I feel like it was. Yeah, yeah me too. We totally uh, <laughs> hit it off just having having some tea together and getting to know each other. Yeah. Yeah, two will you, what's that? That was two years ago, like right now. Uh, I'm glad you have a memory for that time. <laughs> I'm not in my memory right now. Um, will you share with people like who you are, what you do, um, what kind of sex nerdiness flavor you are? Ooh, okay. Um, yeah. So I'm Erica Leroy. I am a certified sexological body worker, and I'm also a certified family life educator. Um, so I've been doing sexological body work since 2012. Um, I've been doing family life education, which runs the gamut of prenatal through death care, 
parenting, everything in between for 15, 15 years certified. And then I was a Waldorf teacher for a number of, for 15 years. And my, my, my love, my geekiness is yes. around human development. So really from the pre-embryo through the whole journey of having a body and what does it mean to be in a body um, on this journey of life. And my whole life has been really focused on that. My father was a pediatric neurologist. I grew up in the medical system, really getting into how does this mind body thing work? And the, the sexological body work has all came about sort of, I've, as part of the wholeness of who I've always been, which is really curious about being erotic and sensual. You know, one of the things I love about you is really the way that you help people understand the sensory system and what pleasure mm -hmm. is and how do we remediate pain and dis-ease through our understanding of what I like to think of as the lubricant that is erotic energy. Like, I feel like... Ugh. You know, that, that, that erotic energy, like just drips through the myofascia, right. And just creates this, like, you know, this ability to, yeah, to lubricate. And that with that lubrication, we're easy, it's easier for us to be like, okay, I'm a mom, I'm a daughter, I'm a this, I'm a that, da, 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 da. And, and, but if the sex part, if your sense of your erotic self is the core that everything you know, gets to spiral around, then you get to come to center, right? In this way mm -hmm. and kind of regroup, touch base, and mm -hmm. then let that just delicious energy, you know, help you feel like, fuck yeah, I got this. Right? <laughs> oh, <laughs> yes, it's the lubrication of love. So that's my, that's love my get down. Um, I love that. That's just who I am. <laughs> yeah, today. Right, right now. In this moment. Amazing. I love that. For, for anyone that agrees with that being the lubrication of life, type in the chat, say hello to us, interact with us. The more you engage, the more you'll learn. Uh, and we just like to interact with you because I can see that people are watching and like talk to us, give us insights as to what you're learning, uh, chat away. Let mm -hmm. us know how you're doing and what's coming up for you and any questions. Definitely. I'm a, I'm a question answerer. I love a good Great. question. Like Amazing. Someone asked me what turns me on the most. And I realized that it's a curious mind. Ooh, 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 ooh yeah. That, that just like, even just saying that my pussy just went. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Oh, I love that. Um, Yes, if anyone else is here that um, is turned on by a curious mind, please let us know as well. And know that you are contributing to the turn on of Erica. <laughs> yes. Um, would you share with people, like I, we have been trying to find a topic that is like ding, 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 ding for this. And when someone asked that they wanted to know more about what to do with a soft cock, I was like, oh, Erica is the person. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> and so can you tell people what you do? I was also just so enamored by what it is that you shared with me of what, how you work with people to understand their anatomy more when they are cock bodied. Yeah. Um, Well, those are two different, two, two separate questions, right? So one is the, <laughs> one is the anatomy piece. And I think, you know, the main thing I see is that I really do believe that the whole, all of our society has no clue about how our genital anatomy works, mm -hmm. how the body works as a whole. So, mm -hmm. you know, me, one of the main things in how I work, especially with male body people, um, is I really have this, this philosophy. So I'm just, I'll just share with you my philosophy. So my philosophy is that as human beings, we are, um, 
we're meant to be to respond our body and our brain is designed to be responsive to the sensory world mm. but little boys have an antenna right they have this you know this like oh a butterfly oh a nice smile oh a warm you know a warm sweater or a hug right mm. and so they the the sensory world when we're young it's we're it, it, we allow it to penetrate us completely, but around mm -hmm. a certain age, depending on both your family, but then certainly once you're school age, we ask little boys to have control over a body part that is designed specifically to be responsive to the senses. Mm. Right. So yes. we, put, we put a burden on boys, very young boys to have a form of body-mind control over mm -hmm. something so organic that really the only way that they can master that is to dissociate. Oh, yes. Right? So wow. then you have, you know, maybe you're still in it a little, little boys, they like to play, you know, they play sword fighting. They're still kind of like, Ooh, I've got this thing, you know, <laughs> and it's so beautiful. But then, you know, by middle school, it's, you know, God forbid you get an erection, you know, in the locker room or in a classroom or, you know, then at work. And I mean, there's so much pressure that then we also put on this really intense, like, do not. Mm -hmm have this experience. Do not mm -hmm. let yourself feel. Meanwhile, beautiful women, you know, as women, we're like, we're engaging in our senses in the sensory world and we're creating a sensory stimuli for this part of the male body that mm -hmm. is designed to respond, right? So mm -hmm. that compression over time where we say, you know, night, you are not allowed mm -hmm. to be fully embodied you know, that 95% that of your waking life, you need to dissociate your body mm. genital, you know, sensory organs. And then we're mm -hmm. going to create this like little window over here called sex, whether that's sex solo or sex with partners that then becomes mm. so genital focused that we still don't really have that many experiences where we have, you know, wholeness. Mm. So my approach, what I do in my work is really focused on, I don't really care about the outcome. What we're trying to do on the journey is bring an invitation for a hundred percentness and that a play date with a partner in, in its highest form as respite and renewal is this invitation of I'm inviting you to be a hundred percent, you know, I don't, it doesn't matter what kind of orgasm you have, if you squirt, if you don't squirt, if you're erect, if you ejaculate, it doesn't matter because what's really underneath it is how can by allowing touch to really be rich and inviting, can we help each other reintegrate? And I think especially mm -hmm. for women or for, you know, or for, you know, or even if you're a same sex or fluid couple, but for because men have had this, you know, longer, bigger experience of compre of suppression, mm -hmm. opening up a playtime or a respite time as really this invitation of like, hi, cock, you know, <laughs> hi, you've been sitting around shoved up there all day, like, <laughs> come out. let's play, let's enjoy each other, let's. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like just let's have a picnic. <laughs> mm. So God. you know, so that's the that's like the bigger metaphoric piece. And then there's just the, you know, like certainly for a lot of people, you know, we have to go into like, you know, this is a frenulum and this is your for you know, and, and but more figuring out how much play do you like. <laughs> I'm like, of course we have a <laughs> Like I was like, yeah. I don't I don't think I can bring out a real toy on Facebook, but I don't think this is <laughs> off for my plushie. This is even better. Like your plushie like it just brings such a uh like innocent approach to it. It's so wonderful. And I'm so glad that we're not gonna get kicked off for having some kind of dildo thing. It's just a dinosaur. Exactly. It's just a it's a glow worm. <laughs> glow worm. Love that. 
when you were talking about the metaphorical part of like the anatomy and not even metaphorical, but like the ways in which we have been conditioned to hide our desire and to feel disassociative and feel shame with something that's completely natural. It, it got some emotions and tears showing up because the way that you're just speaking about it is so beautiful um, that, that that's exactly what it is, but we are layered with so many other expectations and conditions. So thank you for doing the work that you're doing. Thank you. Thank you. It's always a pleasure. So let me tell you a little bit about um, how I came to really, I mean, I feel like, you know, I, I think from the first time that I experienced uh, cock, you know, probably, mm -hmm. You know, I've always been, I mean, I, I'm just fascinated again from the, from the anatomical part. It's just like, Ooh, here's this thing that like grows and changes and it's different and it moves and it's got like, I mean, you know, as I, it really has always had that, like my relationship as a snake charmer, as a harem girl, you know, it's, these are these role plays. <laughs> Always, I've always loved from the time I was a little girl, you know, like those were the roles I wanted to be like the belly dancing girl. Or the, so this idea of like, oh, here is this thing that like, I can charm, I can interact with that, you know, and of course, the whole being, you know, is enjoyable too. But there is something, you know, <laughs> the mesmerizing, you know, <laughs> uh -huh. mesmerizing about that interaction of energy mm. right that when that when this head quiets enough that all the energy is really meeting mm. here right and Hot. i'm able to be there in that same place you know with my fullness of body and have this exchange that it doesn't matter, you know, if we're through a screen or if we're across a room or if we're right, you know, up there next to each other, that the, that that magnetism that comes forth in cock energy, mm -hmm. that supersedes whether it's flaccid mm -hmm. or erect mm -hmm. or energetic, you know, and isn't physically there at all. Mm -hmm. Right, but it's an energy that's that's there to play with, right? Oh. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> it's so good. Um, yes, that it's just an energy to play with, and regardless of its form that it's in. Exactly. Yeah. So in my work, you know, I mostly, I, you know, the major the majority of the men that I work with are. Um, experiencing what I call changes in erectile flow. So I don't really like to use the word dysfunction because mm -hmm. I don't really think that that's what it is. I think that the, 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 the human body is designed to be in various flow states. And I think as women, we know that because we have our monthly cycles and we see where we expand and where we contract, you know, throughout that time. But we, you know, have this idea that for men, their body is supposed to be fixed and this is the way it is. And, and I think for many men, um, you know, the challenge with erectile flow is like, but it used to be like this. And I'm like, yeah, well, you know, that, that's, it used to be like this and now it's like this, right? Like you have to be mm -hmm. in the moment too of where it is, you know, was it a stressful day? You know, do you have an injury? Is there something, you know, else that's how's, you know, how's your breathing been? I mean, there's so many things that contribute to erectile flow as we age, right? That when we're young, when, when we're younger, it just kind of happens. And then when we're older, we have to learn how to ride with the flow. Now you have frozen on my screen. Am I frozen on your screen? Are we even, are we connected? You are completely frozen. Jesse, come back to me. Um, let me see. Oh, all right, I'm coming back.
you disappeared. Okay, uh, you can see me and I can hear you, but I can't see I can't see you or hear you. Yeah, Jesse. Oh, Jesse is frozen and I am not. Thank you for letting me know. <laughs> okay, Jesse, come back to us. Come back. Come back. Come back. Um, okay. In the meantime, somebody asked me if this has if my if this has a name. And not really yet. I'm still kind of feeling out, you know, where what the name should be. So if you have a um, if you have a suggestion for a name, I'd be happy to to hear to hear it. Um, yes. Okay. So I'm gonna text Jesse and let her know that we're all saying she's disappeared on everybody. Yeah. So let's see. While um, while we're waiting, do let's. Um, <laughs> I mean, I don't want to keep going without our beautiful hostess. But let's see. While we're waiting, I can tell you a little bit more about how I came into this journey. Um, in 2011, I had I was engaged to a wonderful man, and he uh, unexpectedly in the middle of the night. Um, let's get back to the flow concept. Oh, and baby beluga. <laughs> okay. All right. I will come. come ah, all right. Let's come back. Let me just finish this and then we can, when, while we're waiting for Jesse, we'll go back to the flow concept. Thank you. Um, so what happened was I met a man, um, that I fell in love with. And when we first met, he had, he was very oral focused and a little bit, uh, uh penetrative sex, uh, hesitant. And I finally was like, hey, this feels really great, but what's going on? And he said that he had what he called erectile flow. Um, changes in waves is what he, sa he said that, you know, that he had gone through um, a difficult divorce. He had been told uh, negative things about the way that he performed sexually. And uh, here she comes. And so it had just, you know, he went through a period of time where he was not being, he was not maintaining, able to get and maintain, you know, erections. And I was like, well, you know what? I appreciate, I really appreciate you sharing that vulnerable piece with me. And, um, and like I said, I, since then I've learned, I've seen lots of men where, you know, they become really generous givers when their erectile flow changes. Um, but we want, we want that. So I said, you know, what can we do? You know, clearly we're seeing that there are waves. Hi, you're back. What did that happen? My gosh. Okay. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> A storm just hit. And so I wonder if, if that just did something, but I'm so glad that you're still here and that people yeah. are still talking to you and that you're doing, you're saying right. things. We're just kind of going. So I'm just giving, I was just giving like a quick background or filling in the time background about how, you know, kind of how I came this new relationship that I have around, right. flow, which is really around flow. So um, I was dating, I was, I was in a relationship with a wonderful man who had ED mm -hmm. and he, he said to me, he described it as waves. And he said, you know, I, you know, what I have are these waves where, you know, I'm hard, but then I can't predict, I can't always be hard. And right. I was like, you know what? Great. Let's, let's have it be like this, that whenever we're together, you know, that's our, it's either a play date or it's respite care or, you know, it's exercise, right? Like yeah. those are sort of the three categories I think of. Mm -hmm. And, um, when you're hard, we'll, we'll do something that a hard cock can do. And when you're not hard, we'll do something that a less hard cock or a not hard cock can do. And in the in-betweens, like sometimes when he would be, we would be having sex. And then if he would lose his erection, then, then became like the buffet of like, well, what do we like to do together to kind of keep the energy flowing. Mm. And then when the cock is in, is like finally feels like ready to come back and enjoy because we've continued instead of like, Oh, you know, I no guess sex. it's not me. No sex or like, you know, Oh, I'm going to take it personal. Right? right. Like I really, I, I, I really trained myself to not take it personally because I think that's something that we do. Yeah. Um, and you know, and what happened for us is he, he, we, we were finally able to name that one of his big, biggest turn ons was, um, was being a voyeur, was filming. And one of my biggest turn ons is being an exhibitionist. It was sort of perfect. Right? Match. 
you know, we would have, so it would be like, you know, we'd have our foreplay, but then, you know, and then when he got hard, we could have penetrative sex. And when we would lose that, that's when I could do more toy play. I could play with myself. I could, you know, cause he was, you know, he would film me, I would get turned on and then, you know, and then the flow would return and then we'd have that penetrative sex again, you know, mm. and, just, and that really, it was this, it was more this sense of like, Every single time we were together, it was like, oh, my fucking God, we made it happen again that we can do this. <laughs> that we can come together and do this, you know, helping each other be 100. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. In this case, 100 plus 100 is like a fucking million. <laughs> you know, when you, use that, when you use that sex energy as the place to connect, but then through the connection to each come into full wholeness to move mm -hmm. forward and then it's like oh we want then we get to do it again mm -hmm. you know, again and wow. that was no expectation right that mm -hmm. the expectation the pressure on the cock was removed and mm -hmm. the invitation for the cock was expanded and what mm -hmm. happened for us was that over the course of our relationship more and more and more and more he was able to grow and sustain and that you know that cock energy and he could really feel it and he was talking about it mm -hmm. but then when he died unexpectedly so he died mm -hmm. in sleep at the age of 42 of mm -hmm. undiagnosed diabetes mm -hmm. and what he had that i was always aware of was retrograde ejaculation which essentially is like tantra right it's the ability mm -hmm. to have a, an or a dry orgasm but not necessarily mm -hmm ejaculatory orgasm and to build without ejaculating. Mm -hmm. But because he died, you know, mm -hmm. really research, like what the fuck did I miss? Mm. And the, the main tell was that was this diabetic form of ED. And so that's how I ended up coming into sexological body work in the, you know, as a path is really to, first of all, help men understand, you know, all the things that 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 the cock is a it's a barometer of health right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that and and for their partners too to understand that that the more we understand how breath and blood and nerves and fascia and everything connect in then we help each other you know live you know we want to live long lives mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know pleasure so that's um that was my inter that's how i you know that that's that was the precursor to think to learning how to how to take the pressure off mm -hmm. and just enjoy mm -hmm. the touch, enjoy the the this this playfulness. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. Thank you so much. That's such a a triumphant story of of like then losing your partner and having all of that come back and make sense in a, in a way of like, oh my gosh, we have this beautiful connection that we created together from this thing that then resulted in ultimately them leaving. Yes. Wow. Yes. And so now I feel like it's such a blessing and a gift when I have, you know, I feel like for many men, especially where they are exploring flow, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Um, which can be anything from, you know, sometimes what I have people do is just every time you're at a red light, can you use that as an invitation to, you don't have to be fully erect, but can you just breathe to the, so that you feel like, oh, there's my cock, there's mm -hmm. my, right? Like, huh, you know, that there's a little, that there's a little moment, you know, where no one's looking and maybe I can touch myself or I can just think down into it, but I just want to get some of that like plumping a little plumping to happen. I wonder who else is watching this who is feeling some plumping because whether, <laughs> I mean, as you're saying this, I'm like doing it and it, it's working. And and you and I have also just nerded out on um, the concept of energetic cocks and what that means for people who anatomically do not have a penis, but feel that they can imagine that they have one. And we've also talked about the genital differences between a, like what changes in embryo from a clitoris to a head of a shaft and how they're all connected and, right. and variations. And yeah, I'm trying not to hijack the conversation into that because that's my own 
fascination <laughs> and I'm, we're bringing it into <laughs> all of it. I'm like energetic cocks, physical cocks, male cocks, um, other cocks, like all <laughs> Well, that's, that's our topic today was the pleasure of playing. Yes, many pleasures. You know, and yes. that's and that's really the thing is that you know when you come to when you really come down to it, it's about pleasure versus pressure. Uh yes. I mean, it's just that simple. Is that when when the energy coming at any form of cock is a pressure, then especially as, as a cock gets older, it's like, Oh fuck, you know, <laughs> you're pressuring me. I just want to come out and chill. Like, just like, <laughs> relax. like, Hey, I've been, you know, I've been cooped up for, you know, I've been in these bot these briefs and under these zippers. <laughs> just like, just let me, huh, first, yeah. let, first, let me just relax. Uh -huh. You know, like, let me just mm. hang out with you for a little while. Mm. Right. And then, you know, there's a, like a little wine and dining. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, which is so different than what we are told or shown to do with a cock. We are shown to like, like, it's like starting a fire, like get the stick out and just start like making heat happen. And that, and then, and then we wonder like, why can't, why isn't it doing anything? And it's like, oh, there's just tremendous pressure, yeah. um, lots of expectations and a time a time right. limit on what's expected. Exactly. And yeah. and I would add to that list because that was a really good list of the things that I would also add a lack of, un I, I feel like a lot of people are not very exploratory around choreography. <laughs> I like, I can get into that because I like dancing. I'm like, yes, let's right. choreograph this serpent charming routine. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So, you know, sometimes, sometimes when I'm working with men, I'm like, and we're trying to get to the root of like, you know, what's going on that, you know, what, what's happening? How do we, how do we play with that whole flow state of, you know, mm -hmm. evolution, invitation to a little bit of growth, a little bit of, you know, like I'm here, like, Ooh, I'm, you know, I've been invited to the dance. Right. And then uh -huh. like, you know, what is the dance? And, and then there's always that, like, am I in charge of the dance? <laughs> Maybe I don't want to be in charge of the dance, right? There's a lot of, again, that pressure on the cock. And um, and what I see a lot is that, um, that sometimes a soft cock will respond to the invitation if we're standing up. Mm -hmm. Not if we're sitting down mm -hmm. or, you know, or sometimes it's maybe I want to do like a, some kind of like a lap dance invitation where it's mm -hmm. more like straight, you know, genital energy to genital energy, mm -hmm. but that, you know, the, the more openness to um, how many different positions and ways we can put our body so that so that we're comfortable again so that so that whatever it is so that the cock gets to just be part of the energetic channel so that mm -hmm. there isn't anything impinging mm -hmm. on 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 the invitation right like sometimes mm -hmm. i'll see people and they're kind of all twisted up and i'm like well of course we're you know we're we're not getting that full you know like there it is you know <laughs> when you mean twisted up do you mean like their body posture, their energy. What when you said twisted up, I was like, "There's clothing twisted. Let's undo that." But I think you meant other things. It could be their clothing is twisted, but it could also be like, um, you know, if you're in bed, say you're in bed and you're kind of like, you know, you're like, <laughs> like for me, I know, at, you know, that I'm going to have my best arousal and orgasm if there isn't anything that my brain is saying. Fix that. Fix that. Yeah. <laughs> right. Exactly. Yeah. And I think a lot of for a lot of men, they're not they're they don't again because they've been dissociated for a long time. That that voice of fix that isn't very strong either. Yeah. Right. So that's why sometimes I need to say, you know, or it's nice for us if we're having a play date to be able to notice what someone else like you might not notice. You might feel great that your neck is to the side, but I might like, hey. <laughs> I am the breath whisperer when it comes to sex. I am like, I'm like, 
just take a deep breath. Just, just, just uh, breathe a little bit. I can sense whenever a partner of mine is like, <gasps> yeah, because it signals in my body, like, Ooh, something is going on. Something's wrong. Something like we need to fix it. And then it's really just the person forgetting to breathe. <laughs> Right. Which is interesting because that also is a huge part of flow, right? Mm -hmm. Like often I'll see if I'm seeing that, like, you know, I'm, I'm doing, you know, I'm, I'm kind of engaging the cock and it's starting, you know, there's like that kind of mushrooming. Like, I feel like first I'm like playing in the forest. (laughs) Right. Like, you know, you know, I, and I, and I love having, you know, imagery that works for so it's like, you know, sort of that like, hello, you know, little forest creature. And then, <laughs> then feeling, you know, a, a shift, then like a shift in energy happens and we're kind of, you know, having something, sh- again, maybe more like a sea cucumber now. Right? <laughs> we're, we're underwater. We're kind of, yeah, exactly. <laughs> right? So sort of feel, feeling that full that fullness happening but as they're, you know, sometimes I'll feel like we're stuck. Like we're not, like I know that the, that the cock is saying like, I would like to grow more. I would mm-hmm. like to engage more. I would like to be with you in this, mm. in this choreography, right? In this imagination more. And then I'll look and I'll see that like, you know, there's sort of like this, like I won't hear breath and I won't hear sound. And then I look and all this is tight. Uh-huh. And- the thing is that we know because of how we work with women in childbirth. Yeah. That, you know, having that open jaw, that open throat is the open pelvis. Yeah. And so, you know, getting getting that to open and then often you'll just see this rush Ugh. change happen. You know, and that's not everybody. I mean, there certainly are always, you know, the people that, you know, diabetes, heart disease, post prostectomy, mm-hmm. you know, you're pretty much always going to be not always, but you know, the majority of that population, those populations are going to be playing more with their partners in this way of, mm-hmm. you know, there's a little bit of way, you know, there's always waves of pleasure. Yeah. Yeah. It might not be the, the stiffness. Yeah. Direction. Yeah. You're bringing up a conversation that I had earlier. Um, this month that was that pressure and expectations are um, in the context that I was talking about are lady boner killers. And I think that we forget not to put these, this in a gendered perspective, but that like pressure and expectation and not being in the flow is ultimately what distances you from desire or distances you from fun and play and being in the moment Mm -hmm. And therefore we can pressure ourselves to be like, Oh, well, I'm not turned on. Therefore, like, this isn't fun anymore. Therefore I'm done. And it's more so like bringing yourself back to the moment, taking some deep breaths. How can this be fun? How can this be engaging? How can I just let time evaporate because I'm not on a time schedule. Right. Yeah. Right. Or even if you are, I mean, even if you are, it's still an, you know, the way I think about it often is, you know, I do think of like when I think about a play date, right. So you know, <laughs> when my, like when my kids were young uh-huh. and they had a play date, like the best thing for me as the mom was when I could set them up for success mm. so that the play date bought me hours of time. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Right. You know, I mean, that was really so, you know, I think about that, too, in terms of like, if I can create if I can create this, if my brain can create the setup where my pussy can have a play date where she's just like happy and engaged and like, you know, like everything is just sort of like. Let's keep doing this. Yeah. Right. Then my brain kind of really gets that same, like, oh, I can just take a little breather here and have that. And when I think about like when my kids were little and what's a good play date, or even when we were little, I'm sure it's like, yeah. you know, you wanted someone who, you know, if you're, if you're playing with toys together, you know, you don't want someone who's always saying like, you know, this is mine, you know, this is yeah. that. And really what you don't want is that, is that call from your child that's like, come get me. I don't like playing with, you know, Jesse made me mad. I don't want to play with her today. Come get me. (laughs) 
And, you know, we really don't want that in our sex play dates. Yeah. And how, and so for me, knowing that the reason I'm doing this is to have fun, is to exercise, is to, you know, open up my spine and be limber, you know, to mm -hmm. connect, you know, and get all of that juicy love energy, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. you know, then, then what you're talking about, that pressure that, you know, whether, you know, that, that, like, to me, I just, I'd rather not have sex than have sex where it's like, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I think everyone would like check that box. Like, right. Yes, I'd rather be eating or I'd rather be doing anything else but having sex that feels like, uh, because it's so vulnerable. It's so vulnerable to be in a place where you feel stuck or, yeah, stuck. Yeah. And not having fun on your play date. No. Yeah. <laughs> no, no one wants that. So going, I just want to go back because I keep seeing this like choreography question. And, yeah. um, you know, the other piece, because I said this about positioning. So I, I actually wrote this as a note to myself to say to you, which is, you know, there's the, so first is like, what is the internal conversation I'm having with a cock? It's an internal, mm -hmm. right? Like I'm, so in that, in that mm -hmm. space of time, there's something, there is like a, 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 an active inner voice that is saying, hi, I missed you. <laughs> how you doing? Yeah. You know, come play. Oh, you know, what, how was your day? Like, what was like there? And that, because I'm having that internal conversation, it's coming through my hands, mm -hmm. touching through my mouth as I'm kissing mm -hmm. through breath. If I'm nuzzling, you know, just through my presence that, that in, I, I think it is helpful to have an internal dialogue happening and and because then you can also really hear what mm -hmm. the cock the cock will tell you right the body will say yeah <laughs> <laughs> keep going <laughs> <laughs> um, but then you know there's this play this element of um what i love it so this is going back to soft cock so one of the things that some of the things that i love about soft cock go with the nerdy place that you were bringing up which is about analogous tissue Right. Mm -hmm. So the softer that the cock is, while it's still in, you know, flaccid form, it's the most like a clitoris. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. It's most like and then the and then the testicles, they're most like the labia. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so si kind of scissoring or mm -hmm. I really love the the idea of like a therapeutic lap dance. Right. Where Ooh. they <laughs> letting you know, that experience of you, of like lit, you know, the vulvar lips, um, being that invitation, right? So you can have the invitation. That's the hand. You can have the invitation. That's the mouth. Mm -hmm. You know, you can have the invitation. That's the eye gazing, you know, <laughs> who you are, uh -huh. you know, but then to, to have this experience where, you know, the vulvar lips are actually doing this, you know, undulating dance on that soft cock. And it is, you know, that in itself, I think has so much potential for pleasure that I often see the men that I work with who don't ever have erections again, mm -hmm. are the ones who are really able to have phenomenal or nerve sense orgasms mm. through with a soft cock. What do you, Clarify nerve sense orgasms. So you have, you know, the, the, if we think about the, the, a soft cock, right. Mm -hmm. That there's so many nerve endings, mm -hmm. right. All of the skin is it's, you know, it's called afferent nerves. It's the nerves that send a signal up to the brain when you touch them. And really, all they all they're designed to really do is say yes or no, right? They're either saying <laughs> yes, I like this, or no, you know. Mm -hmm. like, ooh, that's a flame, or ooh, that's mm -hmm. sharp, right? Mm -hmm. So it's uh, you know, this is it's this the real you know starting to have some touch to this, you know, into the surface, into the skin.
start to send that signal up to the brain that says, oh, you know, I'm, I am invited, right? This is not a situation where you have to, where the brain has to say, don't, mm -hmm. right? This is a yes, right? Mm -hmm. This is clearly a yes. And that as the penis grows, right, that skin, you know, that, that skin expands. So you have more nerve endings kind of exposed, but at the same time, you have so much happening internally. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what I see is that as the skin, sometimes as the skin gets taut, right, gets tighter mm -hmm. and the internal pressure and the internal sensation gets fuller, that there isn't as much um, orgasmic stimulation mm -hmm. on the outside. Mm -hmm. Whereas like for women, we're, we're really seeking and feeling more orgasmic stimulation on the outside, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? In that clitoral. So sometimes with a soft, when we're, when, when a man can't have that like <laughs> kind of orgasm, <laughs> Can you do that again? Can you do that again, please? <laughs> you just went on a cock rocket and your hair just like bounced around. <laughs> so when it goes, right. Well, that's what it is, right? It's like it comes from deep within. It's like a rumbling from within that just goes yeah. like, <laughs> you know, like it's all this like out, you know, out through the like yeah. lightning. Right. right. Uh -huh. uh, and you see that when you watch it, it's like, Yes. Yes. That kind of that kind of motion mm -hmm. as the ejaculation. And of course, the ejaculation and the orgasm are technically two different things, but still, mm -hmm. you know, they tend to still be experienced that way. Yeah. But when you have a soft cock, the orgasm, it's like there because there isn't anything competing as much on the inside. All of those nerves are kind of like, oh, it's my like, it's all about me. <laughs> <laughs> Like, hey, you know, like they're, sort of like they're they're kind of, you know, they're they're um they're they're open. To, they're like they're not desensitized. They're not desensitized, right? They're yeah. kind of they're just kind of going like, hey, hey, Dancing. hey, yeah. hey, 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 can you find me? How about me? Hey, ah. hey here. And you can see that that kind of that there's an opportunity for an orgasm that that I see more with women, right? That kind of rolling. Mm. You know, mult, what we would call multi-orgasmic because mm. you can just kind of keep kind of finding these places where the nerves, right, are going to are, are allowing the body to discharge energy, mm -hmm. right? And so sometimes I see that with, you know, either, you know, either at, with a cock that doesn't ever get fully erect or, and someone mm. mentioned this around refractory period. Mm -hmm. Right. That for men who aren't afraid. Did you ever have the experience when you were first feeling orgasmic energy like that, um, that it was like if you if if you had an orgasm that it was almost too much to be touched again. Right. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. Right. So mm -hmm. there's sort of that like, you know, you kind of have it and then. I think for a lot of people, they just stop at that point, right? Yeah. And they don't realize that they can keep going. Mm -hmm. And and what I have found is that especially for men, that the way that they have habituated through their own, you know, discovering masturbation on their own is it tends to be like, and then I'm done. Mm -hmm. You know, this yeah. happens and I'm done. Mm -hmm. So coming in during that refractory period and not completely losing touch, mm -hmm. right? But using it more as this invitation for like, hey, there's some other stuff that's happening in here. Yeah. Right. Again, you know, kind of coming in and 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 finding that. Then mm -hmm. then I have seen that it's easier, you know, it's it's a it's a it's very different, right? It's a it's yeah. a different experience. When they're like, oh, wait, I can still, you know, I can have some more. And then, you know, for some men, then that grows, you know, that all of that discharging of energy mm -hmm. then also opens a new pathway for that for a second round, mm -hmm. of, you know, of blood. You're making me think that orgasms are just discharges of energy. Is that? That's what I think it is. That's what I, I agree. Like we we put so much or I hear this from a lot of people that I work with 
that they put so much emphasis on like the orgasm. And I'm like, the orgasm is just like a clusterfuck of nerve endings, just having like a, a rage party for a moment. <laughs> it's not even, it's, it's cool. It's great. It feels good, but there's so much pleasure to be had all along the way that possibly accidentally maybe creates that, that like, what did you call it? You said that an or that it's something with nerves. <laughs> now I just want to use ejaculation with like an ejaculation of nerves, but that's not right. Oh, I said, well, I said discharge of energy. Discharge of energy. There we go. Yeah. yeah that that's just how I'm going to look at orgasms from now on. Just like, oh, all that arousal that you built up, all the nerves getting all dancey had like a little surge. Yeah. And that's what an orgasm is. Right. And, and, and actually what's so beautiful about this, the way of thinking of it this way is that then you, if you think of it this way, mm -hmm. then orgasms happen everywhere. Yeah. Right. Because, yeah. you know, I can, I have a spot where it's like over here. Right. Uh -huh. And like, if you touch, you know, if I keep touching myself in a certain way, that spot will get aroused mm -hmm. and will have a discharge of energy. Mm -hmm. And guess what? When I do that, I can adjust my neck without going to the chiropractor. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> like, oh, I can just kind of, you know, I mean, I, as a body worker, even before I became a sexological body worker, I would think about that. I'm like, well, aren't these, you know, these trigger points, aren't they just like clit balls all over your body? Definitely clit balls body. all over your body. <laughs> Like, that's what you want, nerves. right? You don't want to like dig, like, you know, that's the thing. Like as a body worker, you know, I was trained to like go into these points and like, really, ugh. now I'm like, oh, if I just treat it like a clit where I'm just like, and the energy starts like, whoa, yeah, yeah, like, let me, let me go, you know? Amazing. Um, Holy clit balls, someone said. Yes. Um, we, we have covered topics of like play dates for children and how that relates to your mindset with sex. We've talked about, um, the, the discreet I, discharge of energy being an orgasm. I'm curious what else people want to know that are watching. What questions do you have? Um, yeah, I'm going to use that term now clip balls. The funny thing is no one will know what clip balls means if you say that, which is great. It's our internal joke. Um, it's perfect. Yeah. Uh -huh. that, and I do. I, Your partner, honey, can you just rub this clip ball for me? <laughs> <laughs> just gotta, oh, I've got, before I go down on you, I need to work out this clip ball right here. <laughs> I would be massaged way more. Let's just, let's just propose that. That's a hypothesis I have to test out. That's, um, right. uh -huh. that's certainly something that I have also experienced is um, acute pain being remedied by little moments of like light stimulation, not like working it out, but like um, because of me having a relationship to the framework of the blueprints and understanding myself as energetic, mm -hmm. I have played with lots of light types of touch and therefore I've experienced with those light types of touch a complete change of state. Like if I'm having low back pain and I ask my roommate, like, will you do a little bit of like tickly type of touch over my back? It'll completely shift things. So yeah. I agree with you and think that clip balls is definitely a technique for all of us to explore more. I think of it too, the way I like going back to just, you know, again, because I worked with families and children, a lot of my metaphors are connected to, you know, who we once were. Yeah. And you know, it's like, uh, to me, what you're describing too, when you have pain or, you know, when you have pain, there's a part of your body that's like a fussy baby or like a yeah. tantrum. Yeah, body. yeah, yeah. Yep. And we don't want to address the tantrum toddler or the, to or the fussy baby with like, Ugh. we want to, you know, we figure out like, what do you need soothe to it. be soothed? And pretty quickly, just a little bit of soothing, mm -hmm. right? Then it's like, oh, okay, you know, and then the body moves on, mm -hmm. right? It's like, just fucking pay attention to me. You know, you've been yeah. me for, so. Mm -hmm. um, Specific right. techniques and can, can one experience soft cock orgasm like you described without ED? Yeah. Um, 
Yes. So you can, but I think that that is, that's what I was saying is I, I would, I would encourage you to play with that technique, right? To play mm. with that idea mm. in the refractory period, right? Because mm. what happens is if you don't have ED, then cock pretty much is like game on all about me. Uh -huh. it, cock is very um, greedy, very forward cent centric, you know? Mm. And so it's harder to, um, if, if cock has potential, full mm -hmm. potential for growth, mm -hmm. then that, that kind of stimulation, because you don't want your mind to be like trying to be down in your groin, mm -hmm. trying to control, I don't want this to happen, right? Mm -hmm. Like the, you want the brain to just be like, I'm on the wave, I'm on mm -hmm. this flow. Yeah. So, you know, go for that first, that first come that first mm -hmm. growth explosion and mm -hmm. then when all of that energy that initial energy that internal energy has been released mm -hmm. then come back in and use the refractory period so whether you're masturbating or whether you're with a partner that's really the time to play with the soft cock orgasm mm -hmm. if, if yeah if you don't have some kind of a rectal flow stuff mm -hmm. um, yeah thank you you just brought to, to mind a little thought that I had from earlier today with a client um, who was saying that they wanted to connect to their partner in sex because what it provides for them is less frustration, less anger, mm -hmm. feeling confident, feeling like settled in their body. And that's related to the energy that's wanting to be released. And some people find that release in sex. Right. Thanks for piecing that. I mean, I knew that that was all coming together, but it, it's just another way of looking at it of like, yes, you want to exert energy in some way. Well, it's also, it's efficient because, you know, oxytocin is, it is, I mean, oxytocin is that trust and bond. And, mm -hmm. you know, the, the purpose of oxytocin is trust, bond, and I got this, I can do it. Right? Like that's what oxytocin, when it's released, that's what it tells the brain to think. Mm. And we just know it's a fact mm -hmm. that oxytocin is released in orgasm at higher rates than it is at any other thing that we do as adults. Uh. So, you know, if we can have that, you know, that build up oxytocin as part of the build up to orgasm and then that orgasm itself. So it's just a very efficient way of getting a good dose. Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> I love that. You get all dose of your standard oxytocin to make me feel like I got this. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, in terms of other, so the question about specific techniques, are we still, are, is that a question? I'm asking the person who, yeah. is putting it in, um, if that's a, a specific technique, specifically more for like some soft cock or in general, what are we asking here? I wonder while well, they have a 30 second delay to answer oh. that. Um, so would you mind showing on the plushie um, yeah. what like the general nerve area is and what things do? Um, and someone wanted to know if the plushie has a name. Yes, I said that they, while you were gone, I yeah. said this time. So someone gave me the name Baby Beluga, which I actually <laughs> really like. <laughs> and especially because that song is such a ear yeah. song. Uh -huh. that, you know, if this is my, here's my. <laughs> That's not actually my kink. I know for some people that is. <laughs> Love that. Um, okay, so let's say. Whoa, was it bending? Yeah. Is it making noises? Yeah, there's a. It's oh, actually. Wow. It's sold as a neck pillow. <laughs> it's a neck pillow. Amazing. That is something you don't see in the airport as much as I'd like. Exactly. Yeah. So, you know, if we're. <laughs> Oh my God. I love this. This is amazing. <laughs> so if we're tucked, you know, if we're all kind of tucked in, right, then, you know, I feel like the first, generally like that, the first contact really is, you know, and of course it depends on every mm -hmm. body, body. Right? Yeah. but I really like to make, um, on a harder erection. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, but I also, I really like to make first contact through the clothes. Mm -hmm. Um, because lessens stimulation, it lessens stimulation. 
it lessens stimulation, but it also does a different kind of stimulation, which is, um, I feel like it, it reminds the body of touch before it knew what penetration was. Oh, I love that. Right. That, that there's an innocence to mm -hmm. petting, mm -hmm. um, not for everybody, you know, but for mm -hmm. some, you know, mm -hmm. that just kind of begins the conversation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then, um, it's like the initial invitation, like what you're saying of like the nerves being like, do I, is this a yes? Is this a no? What's going on? Yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah. And, and, with, and without pressure, right. It's yeah. just that first, like, Hey, you know, my hand is really making that first, like, you know, hi. Hi. Yeah. You know, <laughs> at, Right. And then there will be, you know, and to get all the, those nerves that are in the, you know, more wrinkly skin, mm -hmm. that, that is, you know, the, the, there is more of that lighter. And I think, you know, for a lot of people, they immediately feel like, you know, they want you to go for the, like, let's get the blood flow yeah. you know, going. Yeah. But, you know, especially if we're taking our time with the invitation, mm -hmm. you know, if we're not on a rush, mm -hmm. then I still find that going in mostly energetically with the, you know, with my, my, the nerves, yeah. right, of my hand, which are also afferent, yeah. right, a yes or no, really coming in and making as much full contact, mm -hmm. you know, as we can. Mm -hmm. um, and then, I mean, I'm just trying to think of as we... It's so funny that it cracks, like... <laughs> It sounds like you're cracking the neck of that cock. And so anytime you do it, I'm like, whoo, I know. Woo, need some right. lube. Uh -huh. yeah. He's very creaky. <laughs> no, we, what you want, you know, even, even old cocks can play. <laughs> um, you know, and I think in terms of your question about anatomy, um, the, the other piece that is really helpful, I think, for people to know is that, you know, a soft, you know, so one of the things I learned is like half of a, half of a cock, half of a penis, half of the blood supply mm -hmm. sits in the pelvis, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we, we kind of get this, a lot of times we focus only on what's on the outside of the body. Yeah. And yeah. That's like, we're trying to pull and we're trying to yank and we're trying to, you know, suck or whatever we're trying to do and so again in terms of getting to a harder erection let's mm -hmm. say i don't have a blood flow you know an obvious blood flow issue then i'm going underneath the testicles so if the mm -hmm. testicles are here i'm going underneath you know in the perineum mm -hmm. the testicles and the anus mm -hmm. and i'm really pulling with my fingers that blood flow that that mm -hmm. that um that spongy tissue Mm -hmm. I'm inviting that spongy tissue also, again, still an invitation. I'm, in, I'm inviting that spongy tissue to come mm -hmm. up and join the shaft. Mm. If you think about like, this is, you know, what you're seeing on the outside. And then if I'm only hanging out with the outside, then that's what's going to happen. But if I come yeah. underneath and I'm like, you know, join, la la. right, join in here with mm. this you know, like we were saying before, sort of this, you know, enticing snake. Yeah, it's like you're, you're doing like a come yeah. hither motion as well. Like come. It is very much, it's very much yeah. a come hither of like, you know, come, come, come and join this wholeness, right. That, that, you know, that this, this even deeper tucked away, like, am I allowed to come play? Nobody ever wants to play with me. <laughs> 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 Right? Like, no, no, no. context of coming as well like yeah <laughs> come come and play come join the party come enjoy this come yeah. out of your right pants and with you and you know and when you're hard you know the harder the piece about playing with a cock when it's hard is i mean first of all i think that that's a lot you know honestly i feel like that's what we're inundated with i think when you see porn you know, I mean, there's a lot that's about like, this is what you're supposed to do. Yeah. And, and that's why in terms of the person who asks is asking the question, and you can certainly put something in here that gets us even more specific. But I feel like 
it isn't about technique. It's about, um, it's about intent, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, because I could have great technique and be like mindless, you know, I can stroke you and do this, but if I'm not really present, you're mm -hmm. going to feel it. Mm -hmm. you know? And if I'm really attentive, then again, then that, that energy, it's, we're going to, some, something is going to grow. There's, there's potential for growth mm -hmm. when we're both, you know, juiced together, right? Mm -hmm. it, that's the, ju you know, it's like that, that is what, you know, human beings mm -hmm. grow when we feel like we are seen and heard and accepted for who we are today Mm -hmm. and encouraged to be whoever it is we might yet become. Mm -hmm. Right? That's the that's the recipe for human development, for human yeah. growth. So if we want a penis to grow, we have to do that. Yeah. Right? We have to see it, we have to hear it, we have to love it for, you know, exactly how you are right now, but maybe there's something even more. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? What else is possible? Mm -hmm. You know, that 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 possibility and potential, if mm -hmm. that is if and curiosity, I mean, it goes back to what I said at the beginning. If every single time I approach a penis, I am so I am coming to it so curious about like what what you know what's going to happen today? <laughs> what are you in the mood for? Like you know what what's your shape going to be? What's your dance going to be? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I love that. Thank you. I think that also allows for a lot of creativity, a lot of curiosity. And that's when I have discovered the most fun techniques where I'm like, Ooh, like tapping, like tapping up along the shaft. Like, how is that? And the person being like, mm -hmm, yeah, yeah, that's great. Or like holding something and like, go, and I'm like, Ooh, what's that like? And they're like, it's amazing. You know, all the different things that curiosity and playfulness and wonder Mm -hmm. Foster, right. which is always what I've heard in like, like blowjob classes. It's, it's like the, the, the best um, advice is to like be enthusiastic because the enthusiasm is the thing that makes a great engagement. Right. And I think I, I agree. I think that enthusiasm is a huge piece of it, but there's a fine line. And, and, and I would imagine you've experienced this too. Mm -hmm. Like sometimes I can feel like um, my lover is very enthusiastic as they're down, especially giving oral. Mm -hmm. It feel that that it, that sometimes the enthusiasm takes over the connection. Yeah, where yeah. They're not actually reading. They're not, yeah, my, mm -hmm. right. They're not reading the response. Mm -hmm. And I think I can do. You know, I can do that too. I can get really enthusiastic. Mm -hmm. And then you'll see that the cock maybe will start to shrink. And you're mm -hmm. like, well, wait a minute, you know, and, and then, th and then you can end up in that bubble of yeah. like, oh shit, you know, is it me? Is it shrinking? Blah, 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 as opposed to being like, oh, wait a minute. Am I, am I getting greedy in my own enthusiasm mm -hmm. or am I actually in relationship right mm -hmm. now and feeling where the, the subtleties of the energy and the blood are mm. actually trying to go. I mean, I think it's really helpful for every, you know, the, for me, having a visual image in the back of my head of actually what an erection looks like, you know, I've gone on, you know, YouTube videos where, you know, doctors have shown, you know, the, the animation, I look at, you know, anatomy books all the time, just so that I really understand, mm -hmm. like, this is, you know, you're, you're entrusting me with a part of your body mm -hmm. and it's on it. The onus is on me as a woman, since I don't have the same mm -hmm. to understand how this works so mm -hmm. that I can, you know, be mindful of opportunity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you. I used to, as a, as a younger person, I used to read Cosmo all the time. Uh -huh. and specifically, well, it used to be good in the seventies. <laughs> 70s and 80s was a, a good time for that. Uh -huh. But, you know, there was always something, there was like a new position or a new something to try. And I always was like, okay, you know, let me just put that one in the Mary Poppins bag of tricks to pull yeah. out at some point. And, um, you know, having that, having, having that playful curiosity 
you know, makes a big, makes a big difference. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, um, <laughs> that person said, I had a lover once who studied sex and was very skillful. I guess I want to expand my repertoire. What, what you were saying makes sense. I'd like to combine that with skill. You know, for me, because part of the, what I love about being a sexological body worker is, you know, I, I say that what I do is um, sex education for adult experiential learners. Like, Ooh, la la. Skill, I mean, sex is a challenging piece, right? Because yeah. you can have you can have the book education, mm -hmm. but that's theoretical, right? That's yeah. like when I was reading Cosmo. Yeah. And then there's the like, Apply. I don't think, and I'm just expected to know what to do. And, you know, as mammals, like there is a part of us that has figured out without too much, like, you know, insert A into part B. Yeah. But um, I, I just think it's a fucking wonderful journey mm -hmm. to be on. If you're, I'm a lifelong learner. Same. And you know, and I've just decided that sex is a really good avenue mm -hmm. for that, that energy. Mm -hmm. So for the person who is saying you want to combine the studying sex and the skill of sense sex, you know, that's juicy. That's that. I, I encourage you to do that. Jesse, I'm sure you encourage them to do that too. Cause it's um, that's just my life. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, will you share with people how they can get in contact with you, what you're up to, how they can like follow you or engage with you if, if they're like, Oh my gosh, like that, that person, I need to have them in my Mary Poppins bag. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, literally, you know. Yes. 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 Uh, so right now I don't have really a social media mm -hmm. presence. So the best way to reach me is to email me directly, which okay. is um, Erica with a C at creativebodyrelease.com. And we can put that in the, we'll put that somewhere on your site. On yes. Your, you can put that in here as well. Yeah. The chat. Um, yeah. And that's just the best way I offer a, I actually offer a free 30 minute initial consult yeah. um, to, you know, figure out, cause everybody I work with, it's a, it's a personalized learning plan. And, yeah. you know, I really, I feel like, you know, being the guide to, I, I call the people who come and work with me erotic adventurers or erotic yeah. adventurers, and I get to be the guide for what it is that, um, you're interested in. I'm. I'll be back to doing hands-on work, mm -hmm. um, probably mid mid May. Mm -hmm. What it's looking like. Oh. Um, and then I work virtually. Um, the majority of the work that I do is masturbation coaching. Great. Um, oh and my god, I know who to send to you. Okay, someone <laughs> reached out to me of like, I need masturbation coaching, and I was oh. like, I'm not the person. So yeah. no, that's my. Oh. I, I love to do, that's the part of sexological body work that of the training that, you know, has really, I love the most, Ooh, it's fun. People, you know, re, you know, just to think in a different way about masturbation, how to use it for all the things that we've talked about as a play date, mm -hmm. as a, as respite, as exercise, as mm -hmm. self modulation of all the neurochemicals, um, mm -hmm. as, you know, keeping ourselves in shape, mm -hmm. um, so, you know, for women, like right now, I realize like, oh, I haven't been masturbating as much. And I, all my, like all my water weight, like when I masturbate regularly, all my water weight disappears. <laughs> I wonder where that goes. Yeah. When, well, as I, as I like to say, it's a hell of a lot easier to move shit out the pelvis uh -huh. than it is the cranium. Right? <laughs> yeah. Now we're trying to sweat it through your little pores. Yeah. Oh, I like that. <laughs> that could be my next uh, exploration and experiment. Uh -huh. Thank you so much for joining us. I know you're going to read the next um, the next comment. While you're reading that, I will just share with people that um, next week in opening the bedroom doors, the private group, I will be leading a masterclass on how to get out of your head and how to be more present during sex. It'll be an hour long. Um, I'll put that in our information as well. Like I needed another reason. <laughs> Great. <laughs> I love that. Um, so I'll put that information in there. This is specifically for people who feel like they get stuck in their heads during sex. They, it keeps them from being able to engage, to feel relaxed. Um, and you feel like stuck in a loop sort of, which is somewhere that I certainly have been that I want to share with you how to overcome that. So that's going to be next week in opening the bedroom drawers. You'll see an invite for that led by me. So we'll put your information in 
did you want to respond to that question? Well, you know, it's interesting because your question, the question really is you're answering it next week because the question, oh. my arousal changes based on sometimes based on the hardness or softness of the cock. How can I work with myself better with inner talk? So I stay present to my partner's flow. Mm. Mm. Um, so, I mean, I think you're going to address a lot of that. What I, you know, my, my, my answer to this is um, first I would, I would check in with, you know, with, is it really, is it that your arousal is changing? Is it actually that the arousal, that the body is changing as the softness or hardness is there? Or is it that the mind is already a step ahead of the body saying, oh, because there's a change, I, I, I now am going to take this different, take this stimuli differently. Mm -hmm. And what I've seen in my work with men is that when we work on that in when, when we release that internal old dialogue of what a cock is supposed to do mm -hmm. and we bring in the same way we bring to our own you know the, everything that i was saying about the invitation about the playfulness this is that internal dialogue it's the same for the person who is you know who has the cock it's like mm -hmm. hey you know, you've been tucked away all week or you've been, you know, it's like a dog in the crate. Like you've been, you know, like I want to let you out to play. And however you, you know, here is this beautiful person who wants to play with us. Mm -hmm. And I'm going, I'm just going to receive mm -hmm. whatever this energy is. Mm -hmm. Because if you're saying my arousal is changing, like when I, I, I know this feeling, you know, so I can talk about personally that like, there are times where I'll, something will shift. Maybe we'll change a position or something, you know, it can be just something. And then, you know, I'm a little bit less like, oh, this isn't really. And I can either stay in that loop of that, or I could say, you know what, Erica, shut the fuck up and receive. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> you know, like, how like allow myself and i think for men because they often are expected to be the giver or the penetrator or the director mm -hmm. that it's a very very beautiful um inner practice to to catch yourself judging your arousal mm -hmm. judging the moment mm -hmm. and say instead you know what's possible what's the potential yeah. What yeah, could be now. here right now instead? Mm -hmm. um, so that's the inner, the inner talk is tell it, just shut the fuck up. Tell yourself to shut the fuck up. And, <laughs> you know, because arousal, because that, you know, arousal is a big word, you know, and I think that's what we do, right? We say, oh, you know, it's this, as opposed to like, oh, there's some other, there, there's some other nerves that maybe I, um, you know, I haven't discovered yet. There's so much yet to be discovered. Yeah. There's and there's so many other parts of your body that can become other, other, other stimulators. Yeah. You know, which I'm like hands. If, if you're getting stuck on like keeping up with your partner's arousal, um, and staying present, it's like, how can you shift into using the rest of your body? Right. And, and I really think, you know, going back to what I said at the beginning about the um, antenna, you know, mm -hmm. I have this, this, this other thing that I think about a lot that I geek out on a lot. And, and like, I think about is about just the idea of cock confusion. Mm. I just think that the cock is generally confused. Tell us why. <laughs> well, again, because it's like, am I allowed here? Am I yeah. not allowed here? You know, oh, you're taking me to a strip club, but I'm not really allowed to do this. Yeah. Like just a lot of like, I'm not quite sure what to do. And so the more that we work to eliminate the confusion mm -hmm. and, you know, of like, well, you know, you're saying that you, you, you like me when I'm hard, but you don't like me when I'm soft mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or that we can just create, like, get rid of that. So that yeah. the constant, like, do you like, is it, is this okay? Am I you love like, me? Do you love me? Right. In terms of that 
internal dialogue that yeah. instead it's, you know, however you are, you know, you're the source, of, like you're a source of pleasure. Mm. Right. Mm. So there's that piece. And then it's also, there was a, um, a urologist I heard speak. And one of the things he said that I've always taken away is, you know, adrenaline is the number one boner killer. Yeah. Yep. And so adrenaline is good. I'm so glad that that's yeah. a good description of the phenomena. I, <laughs> I feel that way. Um, so adrenaline is the number one boner killer. So, you know, if you're hard and something is happening and then you start to think about something that stresses you out or you're not really, or it's like, this isn't working for me, mm -hmm. then you're going to have a little bit more of that depression, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. deflation. Yeah. And if you hang out in that place of the deflation, mm -hmm. then, you know, it's a neurological thing. So by coming back to the, the antithesis of, you know, anxiety or, you know, that comes with the, with pressure yeah, is curiosity, right? Curiosity is the antidote. That's why I always say, come back to curiosity, come back to like, I wonder, I wonder what I can feel. I wonder what's going to happen. You know, I wonder what I can bring, you know, I wonder what I can do now mm -hmm. that I yeah. wonder is, is the de-stressor. And then it, it creates the opportunity for, you know, expansion. Yeah. Right. And that's what we want. Cause I see like, how much more can I, you know, expand whether mm -hmm. that's physically or energetically. Oh, that's like what this entire thing is about is like, how can we all expand in whatever ways we want to, or yearn to, or that we didn't even know was possible. Exactly. Exactly. Oh. That we're Thank just on one side. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank Great. you so much for joining us. This was so fruitful in so many ways. Um, I would love for anyone that's watching to continue to like put in what your greatest insight was from this, what you're taking away, what you're going to apply, something like that, so that you can then work on the action piece of that. Um, definitely, I want one of those for <laughs> sure. Um, and I am thinking of orgasms in that way now of just like a exertion of energy. Yes. A discharge. Yeah. Discharge. Yes. Yep. Yep. Good. Yeah. Excellent. Well, yeah. thank you so much for having me. You're such yes. a great hostess. Thank it's you. Been to share my bedroom with you and thank you so much. And, um, I, you know, if anybody wants to contact me, I'm happy to be a resource and just really, yeah. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Okay. Goodbye everyone. I will bye. say bye. Yay, everyone's saying thank you. Thank you. I'm going to turn this off here.